few short weeks after D-Day, the Allied forces broke out of the Normandy Peninsula. Most of the American army was racing across the plains and fields of France toward Paris. Most, but not all. Either them or us. And they were officers. All right, keep trying to get started, and I see if I can't send back a wrecker. Send a mess truck, too, Sarge. We may be here for days. Now, we're headed for Marden. That's about 40 miles. Here's a map, and I'll show you where it is. Just stay with this road. If you can't catch up with the battery, check with the MPs handling the traffic. Yes, sir. All right, let's get started around here. Come on, get busy. Fire's coming in. Turn out to be our own, Sergeant. Fat head. Now, use your head, Hargrove, and don't get fouled up behind the German lines. Don't lose your gun, and whatever you do, don't open fire on anything or anybody that doesn't first open fire on you. Right. All right, let's get busy around here. You know, he doesn't seem to have much confidence in me, does he? I wonder why. Don't worry about a thing, Corporal. The crew is which is 100%. Thanks, Burke. Let's get going. Lupa, when I give you the signal, you're gonna like mad. Okay. Everybody back to their original positions on the double. On the double. I knew we'd get to that before long. We'll get her out this time, fellas. I'll help you. Hee! Come on! Hee! Come on, Come on, Come on, Corporal Hargrove, sir. Uh, we're B Battery, 352nd Field Artillery. They're blocking traffic, Corporal. Get that truck off the road. But, sir, we're trying to rejoin our unit. I'm sorry, Corporal. I have a priority column here. Get that truck off the road. Yes, sir. Back in the ditch, Zupat. getting anywhere on this road. The battery might move again, and we'll never catch up to Sergeant Cramp. Hey, hey! I think I've worked out a shortcut, though, if a certain side road up ahead is open. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Oh, sure. You're the corporal. The intersection is plainly marked. There's a side road that goes directly into the town we want. Well, here it is on the map. Look for yourself. Corporal, you got some. We're on a road now. That's good enough for me. Are you going to defy an order issued by the Supreme Commander of this truck? No, Corporal. All right. By the authority of the power invested in me, we're going to take the shortcut. May we? How's your French coming, Billy? Get a load of this. Ne cirez pas les bouts de ma moustache, s'il vous plaît. Wonderful. Hey, fellas, listen to this. Go on, Bill, give it to him. <laughs> ne cirez pas les bouts de ma moustache, s'il vous plaît. What does that mean? means, please do not wax the ends of my mustache. Great, great. Well, from now on, you're a staff interpreter. I learned another one, too. Ne décrochez pas les chevaux, parce que le patron a été abattu par le clair. What does that mean? It means, do not unhitch the horses, as the innkeeper has been struck by lightning. I hope I come to something that's about girls are eating pretty soon. Ah, girls. Eaten. 
You know, I wish you wouldn't get me thinking about girls and eating at the same time. It's very confusing. I wish we'd stop pretty soon and let that mail catch up to us. Hey, yeah, you got some royalties coming to you for that oh, book. Oh, royalties. I want to hear from Carol. She had some pictures made. She's going to send them to me. Pictures? He's got 12 of them now. 11. Ellerton, you will appreciate these, being a true artist. Her name is Carol, and, and she, she lives in, in New York, York, and she has brown hair and, and blue eyes, and, and she works for the Red Cross. Did I mention her before? She's uh, a swell girl. Ah, oh, you guys are just jealous. Lupat! Yo! Head down the road until you hit that intersection. About four miles, we're going to take a shortcut. Yo! I'll direct you from there. Sergeant, we're not going into position around Mardan. We're moving on ahead of it. The French have liberated the town. Another unit will move in to clean it up. Yes, sir. Hargrove. What is it, Sergeant? Sir, I've got one gun and a crew back on the road. Corporal Hargrove. They were stalled, and I ordered Hargrove to head for Mardan. Well, go on back and tell them. Yes, sir. Come on. Lupat! Yo! That's the road I want up ahead. To the left. Okay, Corporal. Oh, boy, at the rate we're going, we'll catch up with that battery in no time. We're headed for Mars Dance, Sergeant. We're going to rejoin our battery. Well, go ahead. All right, go ahead. If we keep on going in this direction, Sarge, we'll be back where we came in on D-Day. That's fat-headed Hargrove. I wonder what could have happened to him. Maybe he made a separate piece. Come on, let's get back to the battery. <laughs> tail assembly on that one. Hargrove, what'd you see up there? Not a sign of the United States Army. Didn't expect you would. Why? Well, it's just that I didn't see any K-ration boxes along the road. Everywhere the Army's been, you find those boxes. Yeah, and there's no wire laid along here. Hmm. How's that, Corporal? Uh-huh. You know I'd know that uh-huh any place. That means we're in trouble and we're headed for more. Oh, I wouldn't say that. That's the town up ahead. I'm positive of that. I'm just a little curious about what happened to the rest of the army. Well, Marden is our position, and that's where we're going. If I have to take the town single-handed... That's the stuff, Corporal. All right, let's get out our camouflage net. Mama Hill, get out of there. You and Bert cut down some of that shrubbery. On that double! Hold still, will you? It tickles. Hargrove's right. We gotta be camouflaged, don't we? I may get the chestnut blight. Well, we'll get a tree surgeon to spray you. Hold it, Lupot. Hold it. Pull over to the side. Not in the ditch. Hey, hey, Corp, you don't want to go in there long. Let me go with you. Yeah, yeah Virgil. Shh, go shh quiet. I'm going to sneak up that ditch and see if I can't locate the battery. I can do it much better alone. Okay. Now, you stay here, and above all, keep quiet. Quiet. Hey, Corporal, we won't make a sound. Surely follow. I want you to go too. Come, come. Summon everyone. 
and bring flowers and, and wine and food from Receive them with proper dignity. Oh, it will be a brave sight. This big American army, their colors flying, music. Maybe they have their own band. Yes. Uh, we must give them a big welcome. Voila! There they are! There they are! Oh, oh. Wait, wait! Don't touch anything! I'm the mayor here, don't. Is this my den? Yes, it is. Are you the American Army? Well, uh, yes, I'm part of it. Oh, no. <laughs> As the mayor of Marden, excuse me, a little improvised speech. As the mayor of Marden and as the leader of our French forces of resistance in our district here, I have many other functions, but I don't want to mention it here. I have the great privilege and great pleasure to greet our dear friends our liberators, the American Armed yeah! Forces! <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, on behalf of myself, uh, well, on behalf of myself, thanks. I thank you, <clears throat> too. Uh, now, if you will come with me, m m Mr. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, no, Corporal. Oh, Corporal. Oh, Corporal! Oh, that's a very honorable rank. I myself was Corporal in the last war, in our glorious army, so it's nothing. Uh, <coughs> now, if you want to... Oh, is it? Oh, yes. That's my daughter, Jeannie, and uh, Corporal... Uh, Hargrove Mayor. Hargrove Mayor. Uh, Hargrove Mayor. <laughs> now, if you'll summon your comrades, we can go to my house and have a nice lunch. Did somebody say lunch? Yes, lead on, Governor, lead on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Of course, we knocked out so many German tanks and vehicles in the first advance, it was very difficult to keep track of them. But I was able to keep track of what we destroyed each day. I have a little list right here. Here, uh, here it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, 123 tanks, assorted sizes, 63 armored cars, that's including half tracks, 236 trucks, vehicles, uh, not counting horse-drawn carts or squad cars. Of course, we owe all our success to our leader, Hargrove. Oh, Corporal Hargrove, fine type, wonderful man. Wonderful. You can take my word for it, he won't be a corporal for long. He's to be promoted? Well, I can't say definitely, but believe me, he won't stay a corporal. <laughs> ah, what coolness, what mm -hmm. daring, what courage, <laughs> what an imagination. Oh, imagination, it's... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are the real qualities of a military man. I can say it because somehow in the same position, but I... Don't know. <laughs> well, I wonder where the sightseeing party is. They've been gone two hours now, and they only paid for the hour tour. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hear them now, Monsieur Hilmeville. Uh, it's Malva Hill. Hilmeville, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, here he is, Corporal Hargrove. Oh, good evening. Welcome, Hello. Corporal. Hello. Quite a town you've got here, oh, Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> and we have had a fine talk with Monsieur... M M M That's very <laughs> fine, indeed. Uh, you didn't sell him anything, did you? <clears throat> Come on. Uh, well, Mayor, uh, Private Mulvey Hill is quite a good talker. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where do you leave your comrades, Corporal? Oh, I wanted to tell you about that. Uh, I saw a big barn down the road, and Jean told me that it was empty, so if you don't mind, I'd like to billet the boys there for the night. Uh, the Storio's barn, Father. In a barn? 
Impossible. No, I can't allow that. No, well, no. Well, I don't like to impose oh, on please, you. Please, Corporal. A man with your record, your achievements, to sleep in a stable. Ah, I'm ashamed. That would be an insult to our allies. After all, Marion, if our good friends want to make us more comfortable... Excuse me, and... sir, but what has this con man been telling you? <clears throat> con man? What's that con man? Eh? Oh, con man is an American phrase meaning friend. Oh, it does? Oh, <laughs> Enough. Not the word. Come, follow me. Uh, my head. But, Mayor, the barn is fine. <laughs> Bert! Bert! Didn't you learn any manners with those French lessons? Get your filthy feet off that spread! Oh. Oh. You were going to get it fixed for us to stay in a stable. What a fixer! You know, something's wrong. They're treating me as if I was a big shot or something. Well, that's your natural manner. Very impressive. You know, the mayor said you reminded him of a tall Napoleon. He did? Well, there you are. You see, they think I'm a visiting diplomat. Well, just be diplomatic. You ever get stuck with anything, just call on me. Yeah? Especially if you get stuck with the mayor's daughter. I think she took a shine to you, Hargrove. Oh, yeah. I tried to kiss her on the way over here, and she said, no, it would not be fair to the corporal. What? Yeah. Corporal, corporal Argo. Uh-huh. Look, tell her I'm not in. Tell her, tell her I was called out of town. I will not permit you to jeopardize my comfort, Corporal Hargro. Uh, the corporal will be right down, honey. Oh, it's nice up here. <sighs> So peaceful and quiet. Let's sit down, shall we? It's quite a climb to the top. Sure. Oh, that way is the next village, where we have the fire and, and the cinema in peacetime. Also, there is a school, and there is a stadium for games. Is that a fact? Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, you don't have a coat, Jean. Aren't you uh, a little cold? No. Are you cold? No. No, as a matter of fact, I was thinking it was rather warm. Also, in the village over there... Uh, you know, speaking of the stadium, you don't happen to know any recent American baseball scores, do you? Baseball? Oh, it is a game? Oh, wonderful game. Is that the only game you play? Well, no, uh, but it just so happens that it's a very close race for the pennant in the National League this year. You see, I'll explain it to you. There are eight teams... You'll find him over here. When he walked with me, he tried to kiss me. Oh. Well, about the pennant, uh, the winning team then plays the winning team in the American League, and that's what we call the World Series. Of course, I wouldn't have let him kiss me. Well, I should think not, that wolf. Wolf? You mean like the animal wolf? Well, it's what we call a fellow who chases after girls. Anyway, the World Series consists of seven games, and the team who wins four out of the seven becomes the world's champion. But you are not a wolf. Me? No. You wish for the girls to chase after you, hmm? Huh? Oh, no, no, not that. Oh, but it is clear. If you are the wolf, then you chase after the girls. If you are not the wolf, then the girls chase after you. What else? Well, you know, there must be some answer to that, but uh, I just can't think of it right now. <laughs> Isn't it uh, getting awfully late, Jean? Only about nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? Oh, well, I've got to get home to my boys. They're my responsibility. All right, Mr. Wolf. Well, the battery must have been sidetracked, so I can't say how long we're going to be here. I thought but I it was it. Oh, I don't dare keep it. Jeannie, help me. My wife, the baby. We are all alone. I will run all the way here. Oh, we must get Madame Godino. Yes. Come. Well, what's he so excited about? His wife and baby are all alone? No, no. My wife is going to have a baby. Oh, oh, let's go. Yes, hey, wait a minute. What do you want me for? Oh, it is too far. If you could take us in your truck, it would help. Oh, oh, well, come on.
She's in here. We will send for you in due time. Yes, madam. And be sure and tell her to be calm. And you, my friend, my benefactor, am I not calm? Well, sure. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're getting calmer all the time. Blind water! Uh, yes, Sergeant. Uh, yes, madam. Funny how she reminds me of cramp. All right. Uh, Sergeant! Yes, sir, command me. The water! I must have the hot water! Well, it's boiling, madam. Why, be quick about it. Uh, hurry up. How, how, do, you, how do you feel? I'm oh, fine. Fine. Shall I tell her? I'm calm now. Oh, good. Well, stay that way. Uh, it might help you if you put some wood on the fire. Oh, wood! Oh, wood! wood. Oh, thank you. Hello, how is it? Oh, it will be fine. I must have some clean sheets and towels for Madame. Oui, mademoiselle. Tout de suite, tout de suite. I can never thank you enough for coming with us and for being so helpful. Oh, that's all right. Just don't tell the guys in the crew about it or they'll kid my ears off. Here, yeah, mademoiselle. Take everything. Command me. Thank you. Now be calm, won't you? Oh, I am an icicle. I am a creature without nerves. The water! The water! The water! The water. Here, here, let me do it. Relax now, won't you? You'll be a father before you know it. Just be calm. Well, I'm calm, yes. Monsieur, I am a man of iron. You can inquire in the village. Who fought the German in our guerrilla movement? Who fought of the ferocity? Who blew up their ammunition? Who? Listen. It's a boy, Billy. Oh. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, great. Isn't that? That's it. Just relax. We shall always remember you, our liberators, with great affection and esteem. Isn't it so? Oh, yes. Very affectionately. <laughs> well, you've all been very kind, and thank oh, you for everything. All right, let's break it up and get to rolling. Oh, oh. Oh. Ah! These artillerymen seem to have softened up the local situation for us, Major. Yes, they've done pretty well. Bye! Good luck! Goodbye! Come back soon! I located Hargrove and the crew in Marden, sir. I thought you checked the road into that town, Sergeant. I did, but Hargrove worked out a shortcut. He went off the main road. Against orders? He was trying to beat the traffic and join up with the battery a little sooner, sir. All right, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Corporal Hargrove reporting, sir. You may go, Private Hargrove. Yes, sir. this done. It's a garbage pit, you know. We better get it finished before they get here with the garbage. Looks like I changed my garbage cans for the shovel. How about we came overseas to get out of all that? All right, let's stop the yakking and dig. Come on, scoop. What do you expect us to do, Sarge? Strike oil? I expect you to get your garbage pit dug nice and deep. And after that, I got a few other chores around the place for you. When you finish up here, come on over to the ammunition dump. See, Monsieur Mayor, in these nearby communities, we know very little about the civil governments which have taken over. Now, for maximum security, we must have reports on those officials, whether or not they can be completely trusted. Your men can furnish us with that information. Uh, yes, I know, Major, but you see, <laughs> my men have so much to do. We have the fields and all necessary repairs and the restoration of all the damage. It's very difficult. Well, it shouldn't take long, Monsieur Mayor, perhaps a week. Uh, we can discuss it. Of course, I can't tell you the answer now. Oh, no more for me, thank you. No, thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. I was only wondering, wondering about Corporal Hargrove. If he's located nearby, is there any news of him? Oh, yes. Corporal Hargrove. 
fine lad, splendid soldier. You can see it immediately. Uh, you know him, of course, Major. Corporal Harburg? No, I don't think so. Corporal Argrove, Monsieur Major. Yes, he's the artilleryman who stumbled in here the day before we took over. That's him. Oh, yes, now I remember. Created quite an impression, as I recall. Yes, he became quite dear to us. Oh, what a man. What a soldier. What a character. You see, I'm an expert in those matters, so I can tell you. Uh, I, I, I would like to tell you uh, something. About that other matter, Monsieur Mayor. Just think it over. There's no hurry. <coughs> we'll discuss it later. It was very nice. Au revoir. Goodbye. Merci. Goodbye. Merci. Come. Again. Come and get your mail. Hey, hey, hey. Gilly. Yeah. Marble Hill. Hargrove. Hargrove. Catch it. Thanks, Sarge. Hey, they're from Carol. Don't go away. I'll be right back. There's a package for you, too, Mama Hill. Yeah. Hiya, Sarge. Hi, fellas. Hey, he's happy. Must be reading about some new kind of shovel. <laughs> Graham. Yes, sir. Just what happened to Hargrove and Mulber Hill when we lost them back in... What's the name of that town? Marden. Oh, back there. Nothing that I know of, sir. Ain't much I'd put past them. Why, Captain? Well, I've got an order detailing them for military government detail back there. Why, those shiftless slackers, you... Oh, they didn't wangle it. This came through from way high up. You don't know Mulver Hill, sir. I'd suspect him if it came from Supreme Headquarters. Hey, Mulver Hill! Yes, Sergeant, yes. Hargrove! Did you want me, Sarge? I called you, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I'm uh, not quite finished with the ditch, Sarge. No, leave it. All oh, right, with pleasure. Mulvey Hill, you probably vous any French. I beg your pardon? Hargrove, do you know anything about a transfer for you two men to civil affairs in Marden? No, sir. Mulvey Hill? No, sir. You've been temporarily assigned to duty there. Arrange to get them back, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Oh, now, don't look at me, Sergeant. If I could fix transfers, there's one I would have arranged long ago. <laughs> don't look at me, Sarge. It's all news to me, honest. Uh, naturally, if someone at Marden was impressed with our <laughs> fine... That's oh, enough. It's lucky for you two guys I can't prove anything. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, uh, will I have time to finish my ditch, Sergeant? Get over to the service battery. I'll arrange to send you back on a truck. I only wish I could shoot you out of a 105. I've got Hargrove and Mulvey Hill outside, Major. Who? Oh, the Charm Boys. I thought we might assign them to the MP squad. Then we can call on them for liaison work whenever we needed them. Good. Bring them in. Hargrove, Mulvey Hill. At ease. You men have been in this town before? Well, yes, sir, but we didn't do anything, Captain. You got to know the mayor, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, we got here by mistake after they had wiped out the German garrison by themselves. And I guess they were pretty happy to see any American troops, even us. <laughs> All right, Hargrove. Get on over to the mayor's house. Tell him that Major Kingby would like to have five or six of the French assigned to check up on these civil officials in the area. Got that? Yes, sir. And get going. Yes, sir. You can report to the MP headquarters, Mulvey Hill. Yes, sir. See what happens. The kid got action. How do you like that? I'd have been arguing with the old boy for three hours. Then he would have told me he'd like to talk it over with his colleagues. Looks like it's all in the approach. Now, why didn't I think of that? Sarge! 
Sanchez! Mother hell, look who's here. Oh, I hate to say this, but you're a sight for sore eyes. How's the battery? Hmm? How's Gilly and Bert? What's the matter with you? Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Oh, now, look, we didn't make out this color scheme. We were issued these. The sergeant doesn't approve of anything unless it's caked in mud. What kind of a racket are you two guys got here? What do you mean, racket? Do you think men of our character would stoop to swindle a deal like this? I'd hate to have to count up to three while you thought it over. Oh, Sarge, now quit kidding, will you? Tell us about the battery. Are you still up the line? Just for the time being. We're cleaning the crowds out all through there, and the infantry's pushing up pretty fast. We're going right along. Oh, good. We're on our way to Paris, huh? We? <laughs> I was coming back this way, so I brought you some mail. Thanks, Sarge. Well, so long, fellas. Toodaloo. Hello, Dad. Oh, I like your uniform. It is so pretty. Sarge, you're blocking traffic. Well, let them wait. I came to invite you to dinner. Papa would like it very much if you would come. Oh, well, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, but you see, I'm on duty now. But Papa has already arranged with Captain Parkson. It is all right for you to come. Oh. So it is all fixed. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll come over later. Oh, come early, and we will pick some flowers for the table. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> what a tough detail. You might strain yourself bending over to pick the flowers, but Papa could fix it so you would get the decoration. <laughs> Look, Sergeant, it wasn't that way at all. You see, she... All right, so what? <laughs> My, isn't it dusty around here? And will I get it from the battery commander if I'm not crisp and dainty? Well, chin up, chaps. <laughs> Go on, just make a crack. Go on, just make a crack. Make a crack. Monsieur Mulvihil. Good morning. <laughs> Monsieur Soutine, uh, as the most modern, up-to-date, and progressive merchant in this community, I'm sure you'll be interested in what I have to discuss with you this morning. You don't even want to hear it? The very latest in modern merchandising. I'm busy. I have the bread in the oven. Oh, well, now, uh, maybe you'd be interested in a sensational post-war plan. Turn this charming little village into a tourist paradise. Big hotel, gambling casino, the trimmings, you know. Excuse me. My brain is in the oven. I must watch my dough. Parkson. Yes, sir? Got a job for the French here. Details are all in there. See if the mayor gets it, will you? Our girl will do back in a minute. I'll have him take it right over. Good. Certainly getting bang-up cooperation these days. See that it stays that way. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, this just came in. It's from Army headquarters. They think oh. you're doing a great job and handling the French situation brilliantly. <laughs> Anything else, Major? <laughs> Not at the moment. Yes, sir. Hello, Hargrove. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you, sir. Good. You look startled, Hargrove. Well, yes, sir. The Major hasn't spoken to me like that before. Well, maybe the Major just beginning to realize your fine quality. Yes, sir. Sometimes it takes quite a while, sir. <laughs> oh, well, take these reports over to the Mayor. Ask him to study them and let me know how he can help us. I need... Well, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, sir. You're on good terms with the Mayor, aren't you? Oh, yes, sir. His daughter isn't mad at you, is she? On the contrary, Captain. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Captain... You see, uh, on this job, I, uh, I'm with her all the time. Oh, tough luck. Well, I've got a girl back home, and I don't think she'd exactly approve of these foreign entanglements, Captain. Hargrove, your conscience is clear. Isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. It's in the line of duty, and I'm sure you've done nothing to, to encourage this romance. Yeah, well, maybe not, but uh, on the other hand, I haven't done anything to discourage it either. Uh, I'm afraid I haven't got much character, Captain. If you'd like to send me back to the battery, it's all right. Not a chance. We need the cooperation of the French here. They're doing a fine job. And your liaison work with them has been outstanding. You might even get a promotion out of it. Is that a fact? Well, if it's too much trouble, Captain, don't even bother, because they always bust me in a couple of days anyway. Uh, 
while we're having this little conversation, Captain, I'd like to ask you your advice about something. Do you think that if I told Jean about my girl back home, that she would understand? What? Hargrove, if you do anything like that, I'll personally see to it that you finish out this war in the dirtiest job I can dig up. Before you know it, the girl will be sore at you. And then the mayor gets tough with us. If that happens, it's permanent KP for you. Garbage detail. Oh, no. Not that. Not garbage cans. Just that. Now, hustle over to the mayor with these papers. Get them started on them right away. Yes, sir. Well, hello, Wallingford. Sold any interesting gold bricks lately? Nope. Well, why don't you give it up, Tom, and live on your army pay? Never. Well, Marion has told me how you are unable to swindle anybody. It is too bad. I'm very sorry. I will speak to my father. I knew what Oh, no, no, none of that. I'll make good on my own. Oh, a proud people of Mulva Hills. Oh, you bet. Why, well, I've just begun to fight. I'll put over some kind of deal in this town, even if I have to give them their money's worth. Oh, poor Tom. I like him. He's a nice man. Yeah, well, I wouldn't sign anything. He has always told me very nice things about you. Really? Well, I still wouldn't sign it. You are worried about something? Me? Oh, no, nothing at all. But you are grave and concerned. I see it. No, I was just thinking. Then I will be quiet and permit you to think. I was thinking how quiet and peaceful this village is. I'm happy that you like it. It's going to be tough to leave it. You are going away? Well, I'm in the army, Jean, and the company may move, or they may send me back to my battery. You see, I haven't got much to say about it. Then I will go, too. You can't do that. Oh, but I want to do that. <sighs> Look, Jeannie, you're probably getting your emotions a little mixed up. You feel the way you think you feel about me because of gratitude. No, it is not gratitude, I am certain. Oh, sure it is. It's not me. It's the United States Army. No, not so many as that. Well, it's the idea of the Army. The German occupation was pretty terrible for all of you, and the Army kicked them out, and that's why you feel the way you think you feel. You are trying to tell me that you do not like me, that you wish to go away. Oh, no, I'm not, Jean, not at all. Oh. Yes, yes, I feel it here. You hate me. Oh, honestly, I don't. Now, don't, don't <laughs> cry, Jean. Yes. Oh, look. Uh, look, Jean. Look, I, I, look, I'm not mad at you, and I don't hate you, and I don't cry. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy about you. Good work, Hargrove. I like your devotion to duty. Well, for a small investment in advertising, the whole American army would be at your doorstep, their watches in one hand, their money in the other. Most desirable, uh, Monsieur Hilmerville, most desirable. I see a huge army camp. The men are unhappy. Why? Their watches are out of order. They don't know what time it is. An airplane hovers overhead. It showers leaflets upon them. They run. They pick up the leaflets. They smile. They laugh. Hmm. They come running to Marcel Vivan. <laughs> to Marcel Vivan. I could buy new equipment. Perhaps hire assistance to handle the flood of business. Well, of course, you'd have to enlarge the premises. Oh, it can be done. It can be done. Well, suppose we say a down payment at this time of 500 francs just to get the campaign started. Well, of course, uh, 750 francs would be better. Then we see our advertising taking effect while we... Marcel! Marcel! I have news. Wonderful news. Everything you see will be rich. Just think of it, Marcel. All those beautiful watches safe in Paris. Not now. We'll talk of it later. But I do not understand why... Oh, pardon, monsieur. I did not know you. No, it's quite all right. Uh, monsieur Hilmerville is our friend. However, we'll talk of it later when we are alone. Yes, I will do that. Good day, Marcel. Good day, monsieur. Good day, We'll talk of it later. Well, that's, uh, that's very good news. Congratulations. Please forget what you've heard. Uh, let's discuss our advertising. 
You will require 750 fra as a down payment. Well, that is quite agreeable. These I watches, see. were there many of them? It was quite a large shipment. It came in just before the occupation of Paris. We could do nothing except bury them in a house. But let's turn to our advertising. Uh, Monsieur Vivant, of course you realize it'll be some time before you can get to Paris. Uh -huh. That house may be searched at any moment. Oh, by the way, where did you say that house was? It is centrally located. Uh-huh. Hmm. No doubt you of the military will be in Paris long before a civilian is permitted to return. That might be. If you know someone who would be interested in the enormous profit to be made from a small transaction. Well, I'll, I'll keep it in mind. For a trifling sum, a few thousand francs, the fine profit could be realized. I have a diagram indicating everything in detail. Of course, you are a dreamer, visionary like myself, uninterested in money or profit. But perhaps you know someone. I do. I do. Now, uh, don't tell anybody about this. I'll be right back. Uh, don't breathe a word to this to anybody. My lips are seen. Now, will you listen? There's a fortune to be made in this. The first army is headed straight for Paris. The first chance we get, we scoop up this treasure, and from then on, we're sitting pretty. Look, it's no use. We're stuck. I talked to the captain today, and he won't let me go back to the battery. Marion, if you go in on this with me, I will personally guarantee that we will be sent back. You will? How? How? What? When? I give you my word of honor. Isn't that enough? Nope. This is the scheme of the century. Now, will you please shell out? Oh. Look, I... I... Wait a minute, Mulvihill. That's all the money I've got in the whole world. Well, I'll try to get you some change. <laughs> oh, quaint, isn't it? <laughs> Let me congratulate you. Oh, yes. Thank you very much, Monsieur Vivant. I have to run along now. Au revoir, my dear Halmerville. Oh, that's Mulvihill. Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I thought for a minute you were going to miss out on a meal. Oh, now, don't be bitter, chum. Why not? You not only walked away with all of my dough, but you know darn well we're never going to get into Paris. You know, I've been giving that a lot of thought. Yeah, I'm afraid of that, too. That means more trouble. Ah, oh, sea ration hash again. You know, Sergeant, this lacks but one thing to make it perfect. What's that? Chloroform. Hey, hey, you almost thought of that? Now I can't wait to get to Paris and those watches. Ha, ha, ha. What do you mean? Ha, ha, ha. Because you know we're never going to get out of here. You better start paying me back some of that dough you borrowed to pay for that map, too. You know, I've been thinking. We're stuck in this town because that girl's attached to you. Now, uh, why don't we get the girl out of town? Why? Because, you addle-brained idiot, she won't go. And even if we get sent back to the battery, she said she was going to follow me. Well, it's all set. She's waiting over at the house to say goodbye to you. What? Hey! This food is bad enough, bud, without your foot in it. Yeah, well, excuse me. Here, here, take mine. You'll love it, every minute of it. Here, Tom, you miracle man. How did you do it? Tell me, what did you say? It was a cinch. She told me she was going to follow you. That gave me an idea. I told her that would be impossible. And I gave her a pitch about what might be done. She leaves tonight to join the French wax. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I need to... No! Have you got that? Hello, operator. What's happened? Operator! Wire's out again. Make sure we have communications by radio. Yes, sir. Check your radio. Somebody coming this way must have tripped over the wire and knocked everything haywire. They'll get right on it, sir. We haven't had anything like that happen since Hargrove left the battery. That's right, sir. Come in. Private Hargrove reporting, sir. I should have known. Well, welcome home. I haven't done anything. On your way over here, you didn't happen to trip over any wires, did you? 
Well, as a matter of fact, I did. But I didn't hurt myself, Sarge. Get back to your section. Get back to your section before I think of something else for you to dig. Right, Sarge. Right away, Sarge. On the double. I'm going. Hey, are we still batting out bungles on that road over there? No, we're shelling some strong prints the crowds are trying to reinforce. Ah, oh, that's my meat. Here, let me get that lanyard. That's for me. Here we go. We finished that mission, Hargrove. Oh, you point killer. See if you can get fire direction to find where the ammunition train will be on Sergeant Hill. Yep. Operator. 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 Going dead on you? Yes, sir. The wire seems to be out, Lieutenant. I'll run over to switchboard operator and see what I can find out. No, let's get this wire fixed right away. Yes, sir. Hang on to that, Hargrove. I'll get the wire section for Lieutenant Morley. Okay, Sarge. You just missed it, Hargrove. Fire direction said we dropped one right on an ammunition train. And we got it without you on the site. Oh, well, that was just a lucky hit. Oh, get him. They'd counted a direct hit with you if it landed in the same country. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell you hey, something, Hall you big... don't shout into that phone. They may still be plugged into fire direction. Oh, my gosh. Hello? 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 Ah, <laughs> oh, it's dead, not a sound. It's gonna take him hours to repair that line anyway. It's as dark out there as a supply sergeant's soul. Now's my chance to tell the old man what I think of him. Give me that. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, so you can hear me, eh? Well, this is Mulvahill speaking. Thomas Mulvahill. Just plain private Mulvahill due to prejudice. Otherwise, I would have been commissioned in the field months ago. Let's tell him, huh, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, while you're about it, ask him why he broke the imminent car grow. The best artilleryman in all of France. Yeah, and put in for a 30-day furlough for me, too, will you? <laughs> yeah, but... Well, Colonel, you just watch your step from now on, that's all. <laughs> you know, I wish this was a pay telephone. You know what I'd do? You call, call your girl. girl! I guess it sort of shows on me, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I would. I would call Carol, and I'm not ashamed of it either. Nothing to be ashamed of, kid. Of course it isn't. Nothing whatever. I didn't say a thing. Well, don't. Oh, I'm sick of trying to dig my way into Berlin. I'm tired, I'm cold, and I'm homesick. I'm sick of these foxholes. I'm sick of K-rations. You know, old brother, how sick I am of the way I smell. <laughs> you know, I wish I could talk to Carol, though. You got a phone? Go ahead. Oh, don't be silly, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Why, George, I will. <clears throat> Hello, operator. Uh, get me Regent 66599. Deposit 364 bucks, please. Oh, uh, yeah. Will you hurry, operator, please? Hello. Hello, Carol. Love. 3,000 miles away, with a dead telephone, he gets a number in a second. <laughs> he sure makes a sucker out of Marconi. Oh, shut up, will you? Hello, Carol. I, uh, I'd like to say a lot of things to you, but I can't very well because I'm with a bunch of the guys. But I just wanted to talk to you because I miss you so much. I, uh, I don't like being so far away from you, honey. I wish I could be nearer to you so I could see you once in a while and, well, where I could sort of look forward to seeing you the rest of the time. You know, I, uh, I, I wish I could just sort of reach out and, 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 and touch you. Here's Baker's trunk line. You splice it. All right. Give me Sergeant Hill's line. You sure that's it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. We'll have to change the direction of our fire to around 1,800 mils, Drake. Now, that should bring us near the center of our sector. But that fool phone keeps holding us up. Maybe I can get right through to your battery. Is this your computer? Yeah, but I think that finds out, too. 
They are well. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night to Libby Mark. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes. Peace. Hey, hey, better cut it short. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, 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 Carol, we better hang out now because this phone might be hooked up with headquarters. For now, and a lot of brass hats might be eavesdropping. So, good night, precious. Good night, lover. Good. What? Corporal, it doesn't go to your head. It goes to your vocal cords. All the way, all the way, all the way. way. Drop it. Cut it out. Hey, Paris is out there somewhere. That's for me. You hear that, Hargrove? Paris is out there somewhere. Paris, city of wealth. Ah, the Germans are out there too. Let's get this ready to fire. All right, men on the double. Now let them get the ammo. There we go. Spread it. He's all corporal, isn't he, Sergeant? Sure is. He ain't the coolest head in the battery, but he tries hard. How'd he work out when we tried him at the observation post? All right. We promoted him to sergeant after that. Yeah, I remember. Two days later, he was busted for backing a truck right into the division CP. But he was all right in the observation crew, sir. Well, we'll try him again. We're short an instrument operator, and he probably knows enough procedure to fill the bill. Does it? Get your aiming circle set up. You think we'll get into Paris tomorrow, Sarge? Well, I don't know. I haven't gotten my report from General Eisenhower yet today. Argo, I've been talking to the old man about you. Uh-oh. You want to cut him off yourself? No, not yet. You suppose you could work in an observation post again without gumming up the whole campaign? Oh, Sarge, that's my meat. Eagle Eye Hargo, they call me. Mm -hmm. Keep digging. I want to check with our Liz, an officer here. Hello, Captain. What's the best place around here for the OP? Oh, I think about 500 yards up the road and to the right. That ought to give you a pretty good range of vision. And down there, see our guns from that higher ground. Any cover up there? All the two or three shot up tanks and a house or two. OK, we'll be up there somewhere. If you have any missions for us, contact us by radio. Right, and uh, keep your eye open for some crowd stragglers. We bypassed a lot of them in the woods. They may drift back your way. Thanks, Captain. Go on about three or four hundred yards, Hargrove. Keep to the right. They're moving up some more artillery. We've got to spot it and knock it out fast. Lieutenant, how about that? No, that's no good. When you've been at this a little longer, Hargrove, you'll realize that if a spot for an OP looks good to you, it'll look just as good to the enemy. They'll shell your ears off every time. We'll have to get up along that ridge and find a hole somewhere. Let's go. There goes your cozy nook, Hydro. I can pick him, can I? Yeah. It's okay, you'll learn. Come on, let's find that. Well, Lieutenant. It was a pretty punk idea about that house before, but maybe it's better now. They've hammered it pretty hard already, and they probably figure they've knocked out whatever was in there. Well, it's only a suggestion. It's not bad. Let's try it. That's some of their artillery, Lieutenant. Can we get fire direction, Sergeant? Just a minute, sir. Mystery operator. Give me fire direction. Just a minute. I have fire direction, Lieutenant. Fire mission. Fire mission from Baker, OP. Coordinates 804.9er. Coordinates 804.9er. Dash 163.7. Dash 163.7. Concentration 276, Battalion Baker, three volleys, center range. Battery right. 
Elevation 360. Set. Ready. On the way. On the way. 300 left. Repeat range. Right, 48. 360. Fire! On the way. Zero short, fire for effect. Fire zero short, fire for effect. Baker's firing. Battalion is firing. It's amazing how good the battery is, considering I'm not with him. Request intermittent harassing fire on road intersection just fired upon. No, there's nothing moving now. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, no, no, sir. I didn't mean you. Fire Stop beating while you talk on that phone. You'll have them firing on us. Yes, sir. I'm all through. I'll take it. Better keep an eye peeled toward the woods once in a while, Hargrove. The uh, front patrol might sneak up on us. Oh, not on me, they won't. There's some more flashes. That's a new position. <laughs> got my wire, too. Try the radio. Well, we'll try what's left of it, sir. Hi, girl. You get back to the battery. Yes, sir. Give me these coordinates on that last position. Yes, sir. Get another radio. Staple, you stay here with me. We'll try to get our wire back in. Yes, sir. And hi, girl. Yes, Be careful. Sir. Yes, sir. Shoot. Give the password. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. That proves it's Hargrove, all right. Oh, I got it. It's Lana Turner. Okay. Lieutenant Dillon wants you to blast away at coordinates 805.1 dash 163.8. You got it? I'm going to get right over to fire direction and check on your mission. Well, now, wait a minute, Sarge. Our radio and wire were knocked out, and the lieutenant wants me to get another radio and come right back. Get Hargrove the radio. He's got to get back to the OP. Come on, don't sit there with egg on your face. Get what the man wants. Hot dog! Right away, sir. Ah, oh, this is worth fighting for. Wish Hargrove would get back. You made the battery all right. They're opening up on the coordinates he gave them now. Good, good. But I wish he'd get back in with that radio so we keep in touch with the battery. Sir, we'd better get out of here. They'll have this place pulverized soon. I think you're right. Let's go. You're a prisoner. Put that down. Don, you will tell us what we want to know. Where are your headquarters located? 
About 300 yards to the right. What's wrong with that lame brain? Maybe I was off a little bit on that one. It's more like 400 yards to the right. He's given us the correction on our last round, but something's wrong. Somebody's up there with him. Baker, take that as a sensing. Left, seven, two, four, two, zero. How far are your front lines? You're right on top of them. They did it. That's the range. That kid's gotten himself captured, and he's given us the range right under their noses. We'll be start now, and you'll be go with us. Oh, you won't be needing me. But we'll take you. And in case we should encounter any difficulties, we'll be deal with you first. What about Hargrove's up to? He should have been back a long time ago. Shh! What is it? Only one of them has a gun. We can handle them. Look out for Hargrove. Uh, we better go this way. We gotta watch out for the mines. Good. Doc Hargrove! And the hook! Sorry I took so long, Lieutenant. Well, there I was, coming up to the OP. And on the inside was this flock of Germans, armed to the teeth. But did that stop me? Frankly, no. I crept up to one of the broken windows. I looked in and I sized up the situation. It was only all too... It was all too plain that they outnumbered me completely. I didn't know what to do. So... So you gave the Germans your own gun just to even things up. Oh, Sergeant, have you been listening to that Nazi propaganda again? I'm surprised that you take it in like that. You believe me, don't you? Oh, I like that. So you gave the Germans your gun. You'd have probably sold it to them. All right, let's cut out the chatter and get back to work. Come on, let's go. Yahoo! We made it, Paris! Oh, we're rich! We're rich! <laughs> Before pleasure, guys. We gotta keep them on the run. What do you want to do? Stop for sightseeing and expect the Germans to wait for us? Ah, uh, shut up. Burke is right. Absolutely right. A hundred percent right. Well, Mastermind, what about our Parisian investment? I'm thinking. What more do you want? My money. Money. All you ever think about is money. Sergeant. 
Sergeant. Why don't you give us a hand? I can do better than that. We're moving out of here. Oh, that's great. We can drag these guns around some more. <laughs> Not this time. Lieutenant, the captain told me to tell you the battery's been ordered back to a rest area. We're to be ready to move out of here as soon as possible, sir. Rest area? That's what these things <laughs> are here as well. The rest area, hey. Movies. Hot water. Loafing. Uh, how do you like this crooked army? Rest area. Go to a rest area. You look tired, my boy. Have a nice rest in a rest area. Well, I'm in a rest area. I'm so tired I can't even rest. Why don't we sneak back to the front lines and get some rest? The army promised me a rest and I'm gonna get it. How? I don't know how, but I'm thinking. You know what burns me? Here we are just a little ways from Paris. Paris. You know that we'd be rich if we could only get to Paris for a few hours. Ah, ah, ah. Well, the army's not gonna make a sucker out of me. I'm going to find Sergeant Cramp and tell him exactly where to get off. Hey, Mama here. Get some arm into that job. You bet, Sarge. That's telling him. Sergeant, it wouldn't do any harm if you were to give Hargrove and myself a few hours off. We have some very important business in Paris. Sure, sure. Then when we get back, we could tell all the fellas about it. It's almost as good as letting the whole battery go. You're absolutely right, my lad. Of course, if you want me to bring you something back, uh, perfume, silk stockings, uh, not for personal use, of course, <laughs> you'll find me a very effective purchasing agent. No passes. Oh, now, Sergeant, this is a matter of life and death. Not a chance, Mulvihill. It just so happens, Private Mulvihill, that when you came in here, I was just wondering which two men I could send out on a little detail. Matter of loading a truck with some supply. It just so happens that I've come to a decision. Yeah, you and Hargrove. Why, you... Well, how do you do, Chaplain? <laughs> Evening, Chaplain. Sergeant, get a three-quarter ton truck ready to roll, and you and Hargrove stand by. Yes, Sergeant. <laughs> I have an idea, Sergeant. I kept Private Mulvihill from using some very violent language just now. Wouldn't be a bit surprised, Chaplain. And with all the rations and supplies, you ought to have a pretty good truckload. When you get back here, unload everything at service battery. You'll find the quartermaster railhead right there, right along that road. You got it? Sure, I got it. OK, let's hustle. Hey, Sarge, do me a favor, will you? What is it? If we have ice cream for dessert, carry mine next to your heart and keep it cold for me. There's a road up ahead. We better look at this map again. You stick to driving. Last time you looked at a map, you practically steered us out of France. Oh, it's sore head. Follow us. We're going there, too. Good deal. You see, it's a cinch. We fall in at the end of this column, and we whiz right to the railhead. Now, we don't need this anymore. Well, drive on! I wish you hadn't torn up those directions, Tom. Cramp said there wasn't very far. Will you take it easy? This whole column's headed for the railhead. You heard the man say so yourself. Yeah, I know, but... Forget it. I don't seem pretty... I don't know, Precious. Did you lose her? She must mean one of those trucks that turned off back at the railhead. Turned off? Well, where? Where? Where are we now? In Paris. Out of the way, boys. We're rolling. Hey, I know what we can... 
No good. Wait a minute, why don't we... No. That won't work either. Look, will you quit thinking out loud? You got me going up and down like an elevator. Well, the best bet is for us to lie low till daylight. Then we can go out of the city like we came in. We can always tell Cramp we had engine trouble. Yeah, Cramp will fix our engines, too. You know that. But I guess that is the best thing to do. If you got a piece of paper, I'll mark down the road that we took coming in. That's a good idea. Here you are. What is this, a map? Map? Let's see. Oh, oh I'll say it's a map. That's the location of that stuff I bought from the jeweler. This is gonna make us rich when we get to Paris. Paris? What am I saying? We're in Paris! Look, will you not get so excited? We're not going on any treasure hunts. What's the odds? We're here. We can't budge till daylight. Hargrove, destiny brought us here. Fate intended for us to make some money. An inscrutable higher wisdom guided us to this spot. Come over, Hill, will you listen to me? We're in enough trouble already. Hargrove. Don't fight destiny. Drive on. Go ahead. Me? Well, you're not a silent partner. I couldn't fit through there. Besides, you can make it easy. Go ahead, I'll pass you the shovel and flashlight. You mean I have to dig it up all by myself? Don't quibble about technicalities. Are you scared? No. I shake like this all the time. You keep a watch out. If anybody comes, give me a signal. Yeah. Hey, you hurt? That first step is a killer. Well, here, start digging. You'll loosen up. How's it coming? It looks like the Panama Canal down here. All I found is two more blisters. Listen, maybe you're just skimming the surface. Why don't you dig down a little deeper? I'd like to skim you. down that cellar. Oh, nobody. I'm, I'm just looking for something I dropped. You'll have to talk louder, Moby Hill. I can't hear you. That's what I dropped. Well, you see, sir, we can explain. Oh, yes, sir. We were just looking for something that belonged to us, something we bought. 23 Avenue Cove, eh? Yeah? You men have a station in a town called Marden? Yes, sir. Ever have any dealings with a man named Vivant? Well, yes, sir. He, he's the one that sold us the watches. You see, I have a bill of sale here entitling me to any watches found in the cellar of 23 Avenue Cove. I know all about it. You're the third bunch we found digging up that cellar. You've been swindled, Private Mulverhill. Me? <clears throat> me? That's just what I mean. In the future, Private, don't be such a hick. Don't fall for every con game that comes along. No, sir. Let's see your passes. Our passes? Yes, your passes. Oh, Paris. Paris, city of love. Well, here I am. I dig a cellar and I wind up in a cell. And to whom am I indebted for this rare experience? T. Mulverhill, mastermind. That's right. Kick a man when he's down. You don't have to get down. Just bend over. Is it my fault they didn't believe the story of how we got to Paris? I told the MP sergeant. I told the lieutenant. I told the captain. I told the major. All they did was laugh at me. Well, I don't blame them. It sounds crazy to me. I don't see why they should believe it. Well, I swore on my honor. I think they'd believe that. Ha, ha, ha. Good evening, Governor. Hey, there's the chaplain. Oh, the chaplain. I guess he goes along with the firing squad, huh? No, dummy, our chaplain. Hey, 
He's coming this way. I'll hail him. Maybe he can help us out. Oh, forget it. Oh, uh, Chaplin. Come over here. What are you doing in there? I'm in trouble, Chaplin. I can see that. As a matter of fact, Hargrove and myself are both in trouble, and if I could just talk to you for a minute, I could explain it. Honest, Chaplin. Oh, please, Chaplin. All right. Oh, thanks, Chaplin. <laughs> oh, what's the use? We've told that story so many times that even I don't believe it. It's pretty thin. It's not very convincing, is it? You know, Malva Hill, it's really a pity. This is probably the first time in your whole life that you ever told the truth. Malva Hill. Yeah, that's me. Hey, now, uh, don't desert the ship. I got a good idea. I realize you didn't leave a combat zone, Mulva Hill, but you're in this area without a pass, and I don't think I should interfere. According to the law, Chaplain, you're right. There's no doubt about it, but we wouldn't have done a thing like this unless it was very important. If you could have seen Hargrove, the way he was suffering. Suffering? What about? Tossing and turning, not able to sleep. What was wrong with him? No. No, Chaplain, you're right. It isn't fair to burden you with this. Don't be ridiculous, Mulva Hill. Perhaps I can help. Well, it's a girl. Uh, not just a girl, but the girl. It's such a beautiful love that just being a party to it has purified me. Well, she was in Paris. She wanted to see Hargrove. She needed him, and he couldn't get here, and... It was driving him crazy, and this just seemed to be the only thing to do to stop Hargrove from cracking up entirely. We only needed a few hours for them to get married. It's very touching. Of course, if somebody cared about the happiness of just two plain kids, it would be different. But this is the army. Big, heartless, and personal. Ah, yes, it has to be. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mulva Hill. Oh, no, they're right. We broke regulations we have to suffer for. I must say, Mulva Hill, it's splendid of you to become involved in your friend's difficulty. It's very gratifying. <laughs> it's my nature. I'm Irish, you know. Just a big, sentimental fool. Wait here, Mulva Hill. I can't believe it. We're out, and we got a pass. Chaplin took a shine to me, I guess. He squared it with the MPs by personally guaranteeing our return to the battery. And we don't have to be back till tomorrow night. Isn't that wonderful? He said he squared it with Cramp, too. Tom, I, uh, I owe you an apology. I was a little rough on you back there in that jail. Oh, you were excited. Forget it. You don't owe me a thing. Except maybe some money. <laughs> We're going to see Paris and have a whale of a time. Look, I've got a guidebook. <clears throat> the educational and cultural possibilities of Paris for the soldier on leave are truly boundless. The museums, the art galleries, the libraries, all offer their facilities. To... They're not allowed to make dates. It says really? here. Oh. Well, in that case, let's get some culture. Now, to continue. The great many places of historic interest are open to the armed forces, such as the tomb of Napoleon, uh, Versailles. Melvion! Melvion! <laughs> oh, that's fine. You get the girl, I get the coffee. <laughs> I've always hoped whenever I come in the Red Cross that you might be in Paris. And I finally made it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope the rest of the soldiers don't expect that with breakfast. <laughs> oh, well, this is wonderful. We've got a whole day, and you can show us around Paris, Jeannie. Yes. Here, sit down. Mama, he'll get Jeannie a cup of coffee, will you? You bet. Thank you. Chaplin. I've been looking for you. Oh, really? I put a call through to the battery this morning, and everything's all fixed up. Oh. It has you down AWL, but I took care of it. Oh, thank you, Chaplin. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, where's Hargrove? 
Hargrove? Oh, Hargrove! Oh, yes, well, uh, he didn't come down yet. Well, that's too bad. I wanted to congratulate him and wish him luck. Well, uh, uh, I'll tell him. I'll tell him, Chaplain. Fine. Well, enjoy yourself. Uh, thank you, Chaplain. Thank you. There's Hargrove now. Where? And with his girl. Well, so he is. So he is. <laughs> Let me do the talking for Pete's sake. Don't blow up, no matter what I say. What is Hi, the Robert, matter with... So good to see you up and around. You remember the chaplain? Oh, hello, uh, chaplain. Hello. Uh, by the way, thank you very much for getting us out of jail. Well, it's a pleasure to see you two together. Um, oh, Jean, this is Chaplain Mallory. How do you do, chaplain? You may not know it, my dear, but I'm the Cupid that arranged all this. Uh, chaplain, don't let us keep you. Oh, no, I have plenty of time. This fellow has been eating his heart out for you. And now that I've met you, I can understand it. Oh, Marion! He's a lucky chap to have a sweetheart like you and a friend like Mulvey Hill. Oh, well, oh, well, thank you, Chaplain. Yes, thank you very much, Chaplain. Tell me, have you had the wedding yet? Wedding? Uh, not yet, Chaplain, but it's all arranged. Isn't it, Hargrove? Yeah, yes, I guess it is. Are you all right, Hargrove? Oh, everything is so sudden. I do not know what to say. But Marion, you do not look happy. Oh, but he is. Look at him. He's speechless with joy. Is this the first you've known about this wedding, Jeannie? Oh, yes. But it doesn't matter. No, we wanted it to be a surprise, Chaplain. Yes, apparently. Oh, it is a big surprise. I do not hear from him for ever so long. And then I just bump into him here at the Red Cross. And still, he does not mention the wedding. And now, suddenly, it must be the American way. Fast. Very fast. Did I see something wrong? You men get back to your organization. That was a shabby way to get your release last night. But, Chad, Get back I... to your battery at once. That's all. Yes, sir. I'm so sorry about this. I didn't know anything about it, believe me. What a dirty trick. Well, you finally topped all your past performances and finished up a double-dipped heel, didn't you? Oh, now, wait a minute. I had to tell the chaplain something, didn't I? You made a sucker out of the chaplain, out of me, and out of Jeannie. You had to bring her in on it, too. Her feelings don't count. My feelings don't count. Just as long as you can work that big flapper of yours up and down in some complicated swindle. Well, my fine friend, Please this is the way to... It. it is all right. Oh, it's a matter of principle. I'm fed up with this swindler. You thought I was pretty good last night when I got you out of that cooler. You oh, thought I was sure, a girl. sure. You know, I took it for granted there was some petty larceny involved in this. I've gotten used to that with you. But I also thought that there would be some things that you would stop at. Well, I was wrong. But, brother, I'm not going to be wrong again. I'm going back to the battery and take what's coming to me, and I'm going to ask Cramp to put me in another section and take a tip from me. Don't speak to me, because if you do and I've got a shovel in my hand, I'm going to swing it. Okay, if that's the way you feel. That's just how I feel. Goodbye, Jeannie. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Marion. I beg your pardon, miss. Were those two soldiers bothering you? No. Is, uh, is there anything I can do? No, nothing. I'd like to be of service if I can help. My name is Sergeant Wolf, Sergeant John Wolf. Wolf? You mean like the animal wolf? <laughs> well, yes. You like baseball, Sergeant? Can't stand it. Bores me. Well, sit down, Sergeant Wolf. Our Grove, on the strength of this report, I can throw you up to a court-martial. What have you got to say for yourself? Well, it's all true, sir. We didn't intentionally go into Paris, but it's all true otherwise. And that's enough, no matter how you got into Paris. What do you think, Sergeant? Well, sir, we could use him in Mulhill if we're moving up again tonight. Why don't you leave him to me, Captain? I'll see they work off this rap. All right. Oh, thanks, Sarge. Shut up. You think I'd lift a finger for you two chiselers if I'd had time to replace you? You haven't cleaned this up, not by a mile. <laughs> 
You got a long way to go. So get out of here and report to your section. Wait a minute. Where is Malva Hill? I don't know, and I don't care. Ah, Grove. How did you come to go off without Mulva Hill? Don't even mention his name. I'm through with that chiseler. But he ain't back yet. If we pull out without him, he'll be grabbed for deserting. That's a big rap. I don't care if they make it murder, arson, or piracy on the high seas. Anyway, he's probably back here now, hiding somewhere while we're getting ready to move out. That way, he gets out of doing any work. I just checked. He isn't anywhere in the area. Well, let's no skin off my arm. Where are you going? Just around. All right, fellas, let's get ready so we can move out fast. You understand it? What do you want? Could I talk to you for a minute, Sarge? Whatever it is, the answer is no. Honest, Sarge, this is very important. Could I talk to you? All right, fellas, just stand around so we can move out fast. Okay. All right, shoot. Well, I'm a little worried about Mulva Hill, Sarge. He hasn't What do you want me to do yet? about it? Put a candle in my window? Well, something must have happened to him. Well, whatever it is won't compare to what happens to him when he gets picked up. They'll have him down for a deserter. Sarge, we ought to do something. You getting so worked up about it. I thought you were through with him. Well, I am, only... Uh, only uh, nothing, and I don't want you sneaking out of this camp looking for him. That'll only get you a mess of trouble. You got that? You stay put. Yes, Sergeant. All right, get back to your section. Sarge. I told you to stay put. I warned you not to leave that camp. Yeah, I know, but what if he, he's sick or in some terrible trouble or something? But look, what if you were in the same jam? Or, or you were sick or you were wounded or something? What do you think I'd do about it? You'd give three cheers and go your own way. That's right. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't rest until I got to you, no matter what it involved. That's the spirit of the field artillery. One for all and all for one. Why, greater love hath no man. Oh, you're breaking my heart. I can't sit here jawing with you all night. Come on, get in. Oh, thanks, Sarge. You're a prince for the time being. I got a leave, Sarge. Some guys in the club said they saw him about an hour ago in a small restaurant near here, and he was drinking. All this and drunk, too. You know, we ain't got much time. We gotta get back to that battery. It's right down here to your left, and I'll direct you from there. All right. Oh, il est ici à quelques minutes. Est-ce qu'il a mangé, messieurs? Une petite marmite, un mi poulet rôti, trois portions de fruits, trois asperges, un de camembert, et quatre baba au rhum, monsieur. Do you know any French? Yeah, a little bit. Will you give us a hand? Sure. What is he saying? Qu'est-ce que vous dites? Je dis qu'il a mangé une petite marmite, un mi poulet rôti, trois portions de fruits, un mi camembert et quatre baba au rhum, monsieur. Et il m'a payé avec de l'huile. What is he saying? Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? He says it sounds like the soldier who paid for his dinner with a half interest in an oil well in Newark. Sounds like him. That's Malva here. Well, ask him where he went. Où est-il? Oh, il ne va pas être loin. Il était ici à quelques minutes. Il doit encore être par ici, monsieur. Mais mon huile. Qu'est-ce que je fais? Qu'est-ce qu'on joue mon huile? Where? He says he thinks he's still somewhere in the neighborhood. Oh, let's go, Sarge. Hey! He wants to know when he can start getting some oil. Tell him that he's got all the oil he's going to get from Mulva Hill. Look, Hargrove, I've been in this man's army for 20 years, and I've never been AWL in the whole stretch, and I don't intend to start now. we got half an hour to get back to that battery. Well, let's not waste time. If this winds up with me getting put in jail, oh, boy, you better watch your step. Hey, Sarge. Look. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on with us. Come on with us. Oh, well, there's my chum. That's my pal, my buddy. Sarge, what are we going to do? We can't go away and leave him. I got an idea. Can you run? Like a rabbit, try me. 
Lose those two MPs and I'll pick you up at the Red Cross Club. Come on, get out of here. Hey, stop that guy. He stole my watch. Stop, please. Stop that man. Hey, this is my pal. Buddy. Hey, buddy. Come on, the Papa. Buddy. A nice little bed for you, Daniel. Buddy. Hey, this is my chair. I gotta get my chair. Well, let's get my chair, please. Did Sergeant Cramp come back yet or Hargrove and Mulberry Hill? No, sir. Well, we'll roll out on schedule. They'll be dealt with later. Yes, sir. How's you doing? Sobering up any? Well, some. He's got to be able to walk when we get back to that battery. Back to the battery. Well, I'll walk. I'll fly. I'll do anything you want, pal. Yeah, I know it, Tom. You're my best friend. Yeah, I know that, Tom. You saved my life. Yeah, I forget it, Tom. Oh, you don't believe me, do you? Yeah, I do. Well, you can have my money. They're gonna have my wallet. Listen, pal, you can have anything I got. He ain't sobering up yet. Take it easy, Tom. Take it easy. I'm gonna turn over a new man and be a whole new leaf. Stick me on the level. I'm gonna work hard. Why, Sergeant Cram, what are you doing here? Listen, no more swindles, no more deals, no more schemes, no more angles, and no more schemes. All right, Sergeant Hill, let's go! Okay, let's go! Yeah. You don't look very well. You all right? Huh? Sorry. Thank <laughs> you.